One of the worst parts of Smash 4 was the exclusion of one of the biggest announcements in Smash Bros. Solid Snake was the first third-party character to be revealed in Smash history, as well as the first character in Smash to hail from an M-rated game series. Suffice to say, Snake was a pretty big deal. While I was aware of the series, I didn't know much about it at the time, since the only part of it I'd ever seen was the intro to Metal Gear Solid 1 on the PlayStation that my uncle was playing through. Oddly enough, Snake's inclusion was around the time Metal Gear Solid 4, a PlayStation 3 exclusive, came out. The last time Snake was on a Nintendo console before then was in the Twin Snakes on the GameCube, a remake of the very first Solid game. Before that was Ghost Babble on the Game Boy Color. Even so, Snake's depiction in Smash was based off of Naked Snake from Metal Gear Solid 3, which was multi-platform except for Nintendo, not counting the remake on 3DS. Snake was pretty inconsistent with his Nintendo appearances, but he opened a world of possibilities. I became a fan of the franchise after his inclusion in Smash, falling in love with the series' characters, stories, and themes. While I think most would say that Gray Fox is a better choice as he was the Metal Gear Assist trophy and he represents the first Metal Gear Solid better, I think there's another character that's more suitable to represent the series as a whole, and that's Raiden. Unfortunately, there are too many counter-arguments to Raiden compared to Gray Fox. While Raiden has been shown to hold his own, often fighting alongside Snake, whether it be as a super spy or a cyborg ninja, he's never appeared on a Nintendo console, save for his parodic counterpart Rykov in Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D on the 3DS, which ironically saw a digital release only a month after Smash 4 released. What also makes him difficult to include him is, as a PlayStation-exclusive character, he represented the Metal Gear series in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Sony's answer to the Smash series. All this said, who else is there? Meryl? I guess, but she doesn't really do anything in the series. Liquid? Aside from hand-to-hand -hand combat, we didn't see him do too much. Gray Fox could work, but I still think that Raiden, as a secondary protagonist of the series, and despite all the counter-arguments against him, would still be a better suit. For his final smash, he could turn into Jack the Ripper and have less knockback and more strength, similar to Wario Man. This is definitely one of the more difficult choices for me, coming from an emotional, guttural, and logical stance, since, again, three characters fit the bill to fight alongside Sonic and Smash. On the one hand, you have Tails, Sonic's sidekick from the second game in the series, and his best friend ever since. Tails has been shown to hold his own in the past, having abilities unique from Sonic, and it would definitely be nice to see a return to form, since his character certainly doesn't do much anymore in the main series. Then again, similar arguments could be made for Knuckles, Sonic's rival turned close friend from the third game. As a guardian slash treasure hunter, he's shown to be a powerhouse, certainly a character suited for a fighting game. Finally, we have Shadow, Sonic's rival from Sonic Adventure 2, Adventure 2 Battle being the first Sonic game on a Nintendo console. As the self-proclaimed ultimate life form, Shadow's been seen as more of a fighter than Sonic, and his status as an assist trophy can certainly help his case. While similar to Sonic, there's still plenty of room for variations to his moveset. Something all three of them share in common is that they're arguably the most popular characters in the franchise, all three being close to Sonic both as characters and in their abilities, as they're all about as fast as Sonic, having a few differences here and there. What they also share is that they, at one point, each were the star of their own game, and none of them are remembered as being very good. Knuckles isn't as close to Sonic as Tails is, or as popular as Shadow, but the argument could be made that he's stronger than both of them. Tails, while probably the least likely to win a fight of the three, is about as iconic as Sonic, to the point where it would be strange to not have him there following Sonic close behind. Shadow has both the popularity and strength to be considered, and his chaos powers could lead to some very interesting battle mechanics. It's tough, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Tails. At this point, it's a matter of tradition, and having Sonic without Tails just wouldn't seem right. His moveset could still be unique if they factor in his gadgets, the way they did in Sonic Battle. In fact, that's actually kind of what they did for his meat costume in Smash 4. Knuckles was another meat costume as a brawler, and Shadow Return as an assist trophy. Maybe I was right in having a hard time choosing just one character. I think for Tails' final smash, instead of going super, Tails hops aboard the tornado and you have to try and knock people around, similar to Super Sonic. I've only played the first two Mega Man games, along with the first Mega Man X. Since the Mega Man they used in Smash 4 was the original Mega Man, I won't be including Zero, despite the fact that I think he'd be a good fit. That leaves me with the two deuteragonists from Mega Man 10, Proto Man and Base, 
Heck, if I throw Roll in there, I'd have the same issue I had with Sonic, but Roll is far less of a fighter than Proto Man or Base. In fact, I'm honestly quite surprised that neither of them were assist trophies, that honor going instead to Elect Man for Mega Man 1. What's interesting is that both of them are opposites when you think about it. Proto Man was the predecessor to Mega Man, while Base was no doubt modeled after him. In both cases, Dr. Wily had something to do with their creation, having rescued Proto Man and modifying him to be a fighting robot, and creating Base altogether, even giving him his own robot dog, Treble, to mirror Mega Man's rush. Both are rivals to Rock, though Proto Man was always seen as more of an ally. Ultimately, I think Proto Man might be a better fit due to his antiquity. He's more of an iconic character to the series than Base, and could even offer more in terms of variety, since Base might be too similar in his moveset. That being said, characters from the X series aren't out of the question, as we've seen X in Mega Man's Final Smash, and both X and Zero were Mii outfits. And hey, so was Proto Man. Proto Man's Final Smash could be his Big Bang Strike, ironically for Mega Man and Base, causing damage to Proto Man and leaving him vulnerable for a short time, in exchange for great power. Well, this is awful. Pac-Man unfortunately isn't well known for its varied cast of characters. Sakurai had actually considered dropping Pac-Man if Namco had insisted on using his ghostly adventures design, so any character from that show is immediately out. I could choose the ghosts, but honestly, they're perfect as an assist trophy, not to mention getting rid of them would leave that assist trophy spot open, and I can't think of anyone to take their place. The only character that I can think of is someone who honestly should have been a gender swap to begin with, the way she was back in 1982. Miss Pac-Man is as iconic as her husband, many favoring her game to the original. Honestly, the only way I can see Miss Pac-Man being unique from Pac-Man is if they made her moveset based on other Namco properties, the way they did with Pac-Man. Considering Pac-Man uses practically every retro Namco property in this moveset, Miss Pac-Man would have to shuffle the moves. For instance, instead of letting down a fire hydrant with her down B, maybe she could have the tube from Dig Dug, trapping the opponent and causing up to five different amounts of damage with each B press. Just a thought. I like Dig Dug. Her final smash would certainly have to be different, since it would be boring to just have a repeat of Pac-Man's. Maybe along with that, she could reference Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness in her themes. Okay, hear me out. I know that Ryu and Ken go together like Fox in Final Destination, but the problem is Ken and Ryu have always had the same moveset, given that they were trained by the same person. As a result, the only way Ken would be a good character to include would be to not make him a clone of Ryu, something he's pretty much always been. That means we'd have another Pit and Dark Pit situation, where yes, they're different characters, and yes, they have different moves, but most of them are still the same. As such, I think the spot should go to someone as equally synonymous with the Street Fighter series, Chun-Li. Chun-Li's right up there with Samus as being not only the greatest women in gaming, but some of the first playable women in gaming. Chun-Li's move pool is vastly different from Ryu and Ken's due to her Kung Fu mastery as opposed to their Anatsuken. The only parallels I can think of would be her spinning bird kick being similar to their Tatsumaki Senpukyaku, except upside down. Much like Ryu, I think Chun-Li would fit in perfectly. Heck, it's almost like they're from fighting games. Her final smash could be her super move, Senretsukyaku, which sees her kicking the opponent multiple times in rapid succession. It's a great contrast to Ryu's fighting style, which combines kicks and punches, focusing more on arm power, Chun-Li instead focusing on leg power. Cloud Strife was certainly a character that everyone wanted and simultaneously no one saw coming. Cloud is so iconic, even people who have never touched the Final Fantasy series most likely know who Cloud is. The thing is, his inclusion in Smash Bros. came as a shock because while plenty of Final Fantasy games have been on Nintendo consoles, none of them have featured Cloud at all. Cloud's only been in three games that have been on Nintendo consoles, none of them Final Fantasy games, and he was nowhere near being the protagonist in any of them. Still, Cloud is seen as the representative of the Final Fantasy series as a whole, and his inclusion no doubt opened a world of possibilities for future characters, much like Snake before him. For many, Sephiroth, the main villain from Cloud's game, would be a no-brainer. But honestly, I feel like this is a case where Smash could benefit from another protagonist. How about Tifa Lockhart? She would be good, but I think the protagonist should hail from a different game in the series, if only to add variety. But who to choose? Immediately, Squall Leonhardt from Final Fantasy VIII sprung to mind, since he's perhaps the second most iconic protagonist behind Cloud. But unlike Cloud, he suffers from the possibility that unless you look into the Final Fantasy series, you might not know who he is. Regardless, his gunblade would no doubt make for some interesting battle mechanics. Tidus and Lightning suffer from similar issues, not to mention that they're far less popular and they're pretty irrelevant at this point. With 15 entries in the main series to date, who would be the most fitting for a newcomer? 
Well, I'm gonna be honest, I've only ever touched one Final Fantasy, and that's 15 on PlayStation 4. I was never particularly interested in this series, but I heard that 15 was more hack and slash based than its predecessors, so I decided to try it out. Since then, I've been trying to collect every main series title so that, as with many other franchises on this list, I can play them back to back and see what I've been missing. I hate to say it, but unless they come out with a new Final Fantasy anytime soon, which by how things are going with the 7 remake seems unlikely, they'll have to stick with the protagonist of the most recent entry in the series, Noctis Lucis Kylum. I swear this isn't any personal bias. I like Noctis, but he certainly wasn't my all-time favorite of the team. While it's true that Noctis, like the previously mentioned protagonists, hasn't been on a Nintendo console, there have been talks of bringing Final Fantasy XV to the Switch, which would mark the very first time since Final Fantasy VI on Super Nintendo that a main series Final Fantasy game was on a Nintendo console, not counting the remakes on the DS. Yes, he's a sword fighter, but the cool thing about Noctis is that, as an heir to the throne of Lucis, he has the power of the Lucian Kings, which allows him to wield all kinds of different weapons, as well as giving him the ability to warp short distances wherever he throws his weapons. His final smash could well be Armager, the power to wield all the weapons of the Kings of Lucis at the same time, allowing for some massive combos. The position for the newcomer from the Bayonetta series should be pretty obvious. Funnily enough, Balder could fit in very well too, given that, like my pick, he too appears in both of the Bayonetta games and could potentially be in the newest installment as well. He acted as a semi-final boss in the first game and a recurring boss in the second one. But the clear choice is Bayonetta's Umber Witch sister, John. Despite the fact that her role was minor in the second game, John was a playable character in both, though she had to be unlocked. The one issue I see with John, and it's a pretty big issue, is that her move pool is identical to Bayonetta's, just with differently named weapons and a different pack, John's being Madama Sticks as opposed to Madama Butterfly. As with many other characters I've mentioned, her moveset would have to be greatly altered so as that she stands on her own as opposed to being a Bayonetta queen. Huh, maybe Boulder would be a better choice. John's final smash would also have to be her summon, similar to Bayonetta's Infernal Climax, maybe summoning Madama Sticks instead. 